For years now, the Sony 85mm f1.4 G Master lens has been widely considered among Sony users as like the holy grail of portrait lenses. But with Sigma recently announcing the release of a completely redesigned version of their much loved 85mm f1.4 art lens, which has been specifically built for full frame mirrorless cameras, has Sigma finally produced a contender that can rip the crown from Sony's head? Well, in this video, we're going to be pitching these two lenses against each other alongside the incredible value for money option which is the Samyang AF 85mm f1.4 to see which of these lenses is truly the portrait lens of the gods. Oh yeah, we're also chucking in the old Sigma 85mm into the ring just for shits and giggles. Let's do this. Before we start this video, I just want to make it clear that this is a totally independent test. As always, none of the manufacturers in today's lineup have paid us to make this review and all of the opinions expressed in this video are purely my own based on the evidence we have collected during our time with these lenses. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's start by taking a look at the general build quality and features of each of these lenses going through in price order from cheapest to most expensive. The Samyang AF 85mm f1.4 FE is not only the cheapest lens in our lineup, priced at a modest £549, but it's also the lightest as well, with a weight of just 568 grams. Its lightweight probably has everything to do with its predominantly plastic build and the lack of any manual switches or dials. It literally only has one rubberized focus ring and that is it. That means switching from auto to manual focus has to be done on the back of your camera. Next up in our lineup is Big Papa himself. The classic Sigma 85mm f1.4 DG HSM lens. At £929 and weighing in at a hefty 1.1 kilograms, this is by far the heaviest lens in the group. Though it's kind of not surprising seeing as this lens was originally developed for full frame DSLRs and was later repurposed to fit onto mirrorless cameras. You can clearly see where they've simply slapped on an extra bit of the base here to make it fit. Despite its age, this lens feels super solid in terms of build quality and features a smooth focusing ring, a manual AF to MF switch and a focus distance indicator on the side. The Youngblood is up next with a price tag of £999 and a weight of just 635 grams. This brand new Sigma 85mm f1.4 DGDN lens is the second lightest lens in our test. On the outside of the lens, there's a manual aperture ring and that can be de-clicked using this switch. Although this is a feature that probably isn't much use to photographers, it may help videographers if you need to transition from dark to bright areas and want to close down the aperture without awkwardly clicking through all of the stops. This dial can also be set to auto mode, allowing you to alter the aperture with your camera dials like most of the lenses. On the side, there's an MF AF switch, a customizable button, and there's also a switch that lets you lock the aperture dial into auto mode to stop it from slipping onto F16 by accident. Last but not least, it's the Sony FE 85mm f1.4 G Master lens. Priced at a whopping £1,499, it's by far the most expensive glass in our test. Weighing in at 820 grams, it's also the second heaviest too. Just like the new Sigma 85mm, this lens features a manual aperture ring that could be de-clicked using a switch on the side, and it has a customizable button too. However, unlike the Sigma, there isn't a lock button for this aperture dial, so this can't be fixed into the automatic position. Finally, there's a manual MF to AF switch on the side, as you'd kind of expect from a top tier lens. So now we've taken a look at our contenders, let's get stuck into what really matters, which is looking at how they handle out in the field. For our test, we started by heading out with our model Tamarin to see how the autofocus of each lens would handle. During the test, I shot exclusively at f1.4 just to see if they could create a nice sharp image even when using an extremely shallow depth of field. Now I'm happy to report that all of the lenses performed really, really well with no signs of hunting from any of them during the test. In terms of handling, the Samyang and the new Sigma were by far the nicest to work with just purely down to their light weight. The old Sigma in particular was a bit of a beast to work with due to its much bigger size and heavier weight. It just made the camera feel really front heavy. But overall, there were really no complaints to be made here. Well, that's kind of not true. So full disclosure here, this Samyang 85mm that we're using in this test wasn't the first one we received. 
The first one that we received had to be sent back because we had a problem with it where the AF would just occasionally, out of the blue, lock up and freeze our camera. We couldn't recreate this problem on demand, so unfortunately we didn't get it on video, but it was just something that out of the blue would happen and force us to stop shooting, which was really frustrating. After doing a bit of research on this subject, I've seen that there are a fair few other people online that have had the same kind of issue with some copies of this lens, whilst other people have had absolutely no problems whatsoever. So I really don't know what the cause of it is. It may be a quality control issue, but whatever it is, I felt like I should probably mention it to you guys just because it wasn't a great first impression. That said, the new lens that we've been testing hasn't given us any problems whatsoever. So, with that out of the way, whilst we're on the subject of AF, we also performed a quick test to see how each of the lenses would cope whilst tracking a moving subject whilst in video mode and using the widest aperture of f1.4. For this test, we enabled face detection on the Sony a7 Mark III that we were using for this test, and then we simply walked towards the camera, first at a regular walking pace, and then at a bit of a faster pace. All of the lenses worked quickly and quietly during this testing. The old Sigma was a little bit more sluggish than the newer lenses, and it struggled to keep up at times but the other three all managed to keep up focus without any problems whatsoever okay so now it's time for the moment you've probably all been waiting for let's talk about image quality after our shoot with tamarin i took all of the images we'd shot and looked through them all to see if we could find a clear winner remember i shot all of the images at f1.4 because let's face it you don't spend this much money on an f1.4 lens and not be able to produce good quality images at f1.4 i mean what would be the point overall i was genuinely really impressed with the image quality of all of these lenses i did also notice that samyang gave the images a slightly weird yellowish tint which made amber skin tone look a bit odd so after looking at the results from the shoot with tamarin i decided actually it's going to be a lot harder to try and find a winner out of all of these lenses than i first imagined so i decided we probably had to get a bit more scientific with this process in order to create a bit of separation between the contenders Historically, I'm not a huge fan of lens charts or things like that. I mean, personally, I prefer to look at what a lens is capable of producing when tested in real life situations. I mean, sure, you can look at charts and figure out that it's a little bit softer at the edges at 1.4, but I mean, honestly, when was the last time that you took a photo at f1.4 and expected anything but the middle of the frame to be sharp? That said, because so far the results of these lenses has been so closely fought and I'm struggling to find a winner, I think we need to dive into the topic of image quality a little bit deeper. So in order to solve this problem we conducted a very highly scientific test where we basically headed out to a brick wall just outside of our studio and took a picture of it with each of the lenses at f1.4 to see which one suffered from the worst vignetting distortion and also gave us the best overall sharpness. Now I should mention that this was quite a tricky thing to judge because as I've already mentioned in my review of the new Sigma 85mm lens, which you can watch here, when this lens was developed, in order to keep the size and weight down, Sigma had decided not to focus on glass elements that were correct for things like distortion and vignetting. Instead, they decided to take advantage of Sony's built-in lens correction software that would just take care of this for them. So to make this a completely fair test, we took pictures with all four lenses, both with and without the in-camera lens comp compensation activated to see what would happen. We're also only going to focus on how the lenses perform when shooting at f1.4 because as I've already explained to me this is where it really counts. Okay so going from worst performer to best performer. The worst performer of the group was the Samyang unfortunately though I'm using the term worst very very lightly here because Overall, it's not a bad lens, just in this group it was outperformed. The centre of the frame was really nice and sharp though, of course, this got a little bit worse towards the edges of the frame. There's also definitely some fairly heavy vignetting going on here, but honestly, once the lens correction was switched on on my camera, this was almost entirely removed. I think this photo definitely confirms that there is a yellow tinge to these photos, which is definitely a problem. Okay, so next was the old Sigma. This lens was arguably just as sharp as the Samyang in the middle, but was slightly slightly sharper towards the edges and the vignetting wasn't quite as bad but with lens correction enabled the vignetting pretty much disappeared. Sony definitely wins the award for being the most consistently sharp lens and it offered the best edge sharpness of the bunch. Vignetting was also less of a problem with this lens too. Finally, there's the new Sigma. Without the lens correction enabled, there's some pretty substantial pink cushion distortion at the edges of the frame, though that's kind of to be expected as that's how they built it. Vignetting is also an issue, but again, kind of expected. However, when the lens correction settings are enabled, this is a totally different lens and these issues are miraculously fixed. The new Sigma is by far the sharpest lens at the center of the frame. It's just ridiculous how much detail is resolved. 
The sharpness does fall off towards the edges of the frame, but like I've said before, as far as I'm concerned, it's the center sharpness that I'm most worried about when considering to buy a new lens. Now that we've seen all of the evidence, I need to come up with a conclusion and find out who's the winner, which is actually a lot harder than I thought it would be. But we've got to imagine a scenario where I had a budget of a grand and a half and I had to buy one of these lenses. So which would I buy? Well, let's go through them one by one. Let's start with Old Papa. I have a fond place in my heart for Old Papa. But for me, when I'm using a mirrorless DSLR, it's just too big and heavy. Performance-wise, it's still a great lens. For a mirrorless camera, it's just not a great option, especially when you've got the new Sigma 85 millimeter lens, which is half, pretty much half the weight and half the size and better sharpness in the center of the frame. So for me, Old Papa, He's out the window, he's out of this competition for sure. Next up, I kind of have to consider the Samyang. Now the Samyang is a bargain. It is 500 pounds cheaper than the new Sigma and it's a grand cheaper than the Sony. So on that side, it wins hands down. AF performance was great throughout. I'm really impressed with that. Build quality, fine, a bit plasticky, but for 500 quid, I'm not gonna shed any tears over that. The things that do bug me slightly are those issues that we had with the first copy of it. I know the one that we tested was absolutely fine, but there's always that shadow of doubt in the back of my mind that I could be on a shoot somewhere and it just bricks my camera. That terrifies me personally. So I've got to take that into consideration. There's also the issue of the yellow cast we need to consider as well. I mean, this is something you could quite easily correct in post, but to me, it felt a bit annoying. I don't really want a lens that's gonna be giving me more work to do in post. Now the Sony is everything you would kind of expect from a lens that's 1,500 pounds. High build quality, high performance, just a really good all-round lens. I really am struggling to find any gripes with it. I mean, if, there, if I really, really had to dig deep and find a problem, it would be the fact that there's not a lock switch for the manual aperture ring. Probably two times where I've been shooting with it and I go to put it to my eye and I notice it's on F16. I'm like, well, that's weird. It should be F1.4. Look at the back of the camera to try and change it and I can't change it. And then I'll go, oh yeah, you dumbass. It should be on automatic. It's those kind of handling issues that eventually get a little bit tiring. So I think you kind of know where I'm going with this one. And for me, there's one clear winner and it has to be the Sigma 85 mm 1.4 DGDN lens. It just ticks all the boxes. It's super sharp, like one of the sharpest lenses I've ever handled by far. It has a fast and accurate AF. It's lightweight and it pretty much offers everything that the G Master does, but with a price tag that's 500 quid cheaper. And that's huge. With that money, you could easily invest in another lens or put it towards another camera body. Like that's a significant saving. If I had to hand out a highly commended award to one of the lenses in our test, as sort of a runner-up, it would probably have to go to the Samyang, to be honest. I mean, yes, like I mentioned, the yellow cast is a bit annoying. However, for the price, the performance is brilliant, really. And if you can't stretch your budget to a thousand pounds, then that is the option to go for. Whew, got there in the end, guys. We got there in the end. Thank you so much for sticking on to the end and watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then please give it a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think I've made the right choice or would you pick another one of these lenses? Be sure to subscribe as well for more content. We release videos like this every single Friday. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.